Hey guys, so I realize it's been about a week and I had every intention of doing a weekly video. So when I first started this, what I did was maybe a couple videos going through the communications, just recapping the basic stuff in the book. And then I had one video where I kind of circled back to some of the things that I had read. And maybe part six, I'll follow up on some of the important research lists of names and all that good time consuming stuff. One thing I just wanna go back to real quick because of something that I recently saw on the subreddit, one of the original communications, the one where Lucas tells Ken he sees him make lights on the box. Really interesting idea that perhaps one of these original communications before it was translated could be something else. Could Liam's voice be an acronym? Low Energy Electron Mass Spectrometry and Boyce, where they do this kind of science. Just an interesting theory. Um, but by the time I had written back, he wasn't even so sure <laughs> of his own theory. He goes on to note the origin of Boyce, but I still kind of have a hunch about this LEAMS acronym thing. Man, this is just the basics, and I can't even understand it. Maybe some of y'all that took chemistry in high school can look into this site. I'll link it at the bottom. But this is just a good example of why I created this subreddit so people could actually talk about it. So yeah, there's a lot of things I want to circle back to, but today I am just going to go through the communications. All right, so the next communication we have on page 99. You are a foolish scoundrel who has brought nothing less than evil upon the wretch. I hope he comes to no harm, for I guarantee your death by my own hand some way. It was not to be avoided with your charm of lights, and now he sits in the shameful dungeon. Oh, this is my favorite part. It will be your own ruin. Unless you help Lucas, he will die. If you reveal yourselves to the crown for what you are and display your devilish powers, then his life is saved. Reveal the truth and give no false threats and explain what is necessary, computer. Signed, friend. Okay. Do you guys remember when he had a friend? A friend? Uh, this could be that same friend. <laughs> I actually think this friend is a brother. I think this friend's name is John and I think that it's his brother. If you remember, there was this one instance where Lucas could have been in trouble and his brother came and like scooped him up on a horse his brother john that's who i think it is so we're supposed to believe that lucas is in jail he's imprisoned and we're also supposed to believe that poor deb and ken can help him with this yeah anyway they replied immediately so he's just saying i have to know his name in order to help him but there's basically nothing he can do. Lucas's friend John writes back. He says, he's spoken with the sheriff who says, you ask him to come at short notice, but he will come tomorrow. You have asked the name of Lucas Wayneman. So this is when we get a last name, but it's still not a legit name. For reasons I do not understand, his name is unknown to me. I hasten to ask him this, but he said he could not tell unless it be to your ear alone. He said, if this is what it is to help my friend, then I will hasten to press the matter to him. The sheriff told me that if you can show yourselves for what you are, then you must give the mighty power to him and he will request pardon for our friend Lucas and he will beg the king himself to speak with you and your king. This is a thing that the sheriff himself has not had the pleasure of. The pleasure of begging? I don't, I'm confused here. So oh, it, 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 something the sheriff hasn't had the pleasure of is communicating with a time traveler. Gee, you don't say. What? This message is from someone calling themselves John, telling them that the sheriff had put Lucas into prison for communicating with them. Debbie appeared to be genuinely concerned at this turn of events. Well, yeah, I think most people would be concerned, but I think a little bit more might be going on with Deb, don't you think? It is not right that you ask for my friend's name if you can give no reason why you are asking. How can it help him? 
The sheriff does ask that you speak to him in person rather than through the computer, which he can't see. Otherwise, the computer must be taken to Lucas in Boughton Prison or Nantwich, if he is there now, to show that he spoke the truth. But it is not easy to move the device as it seems to disappear when any have tried. Only when Lucas is here does it appear solid. I beg a quick reply so I may go to him. Only when Lucas is here does it appear solid. That's crazy. This is crazy. This whole story is crazy. Now they expect him to get Lucas out of the police station thousands of years before their time. I, I don't know how this is possible, but again, Ken is just like, I'm willing to talk to whatever. I'm willing to say whatever. There's no tricks about us. This is, we're here. You know what I mean? So he just wants to help and try to persuade the sheriff to bring Lucas back. It looks like Lucas writes back. I know not where I can start to describe my misfortunes, but it is so good that I can have your true words once more, which I did not think to hear again. I have thought much of what you said and about the box of lights, for it is this very matter I fear for my life. The sheriff has forbidden me to leave my house and I am guarded by the sheriff's men who are at each door, but he agreed that I should be left to myself. There is nothing you can do because I have communicated with your time and here are the consequences. I think we are a history book that has its front and back pages joined together. We are each a side of it. The boist comes not from my time nor your time, but from God, as it were a guide for some purpose. We are in God's book. I can see what is to come and what has been. You can see only what has been. When your box came, there was a verse on it that said I was not to ask about your unnatural knowledge, for the box of lights will be no more. It was in my language. My fellow Peter could not have done the writing so true as this was. I think you do not know about this. I have told the sheriff that Though I have seen you and your sweet maid many times, one cannot speak with them, nor can I either, and never had. But I said, you are of strange description and appearance that it would frighten any man to see you. I told him it is not too wise. Nonetheless, I am still to satisfy his demands before the seventh day. I know not who betrayed me and accused me, but I know you are my true friends for whom I have much love. You would not do this to me and betray the trust we have. I think you know what my fortune is, but I know not what you can do, my goodly friend. There must be some way of your time that can help me from my fate, for I see only the iniquity and cold temper of the law around my neck. You are now my true friends who are my only hope. Yes, I am old, but I have so many questions to ask you for my book, which is all I want before I go to God. Pray you destroy my writing for the fear of sheriff may ask what I have said to you, your helpless friend, Lucas. Deb was alone when this message came. She felt upset and replied immediately with a few words of comfort saying she'd fetch me as soon as possible. This poor guy. So I don't know, man, is he on house arrest? Is he going through a little type of witch trial thing? Is this another test? Uh, just some kind of weird high stakes test. Page 109. Lucas continues writing, My fellow Peter, alas, what can be done? I cannot even take your hand before sentence of death. I must have your words before I bid farewell to good Peter. Long live our Oxford, Lucas. You said your time in 1985. I thought you were also from 2109 like your friend who brought the box of lights, pray. So this is the first time that we hear the mention of 2109 and uh, it's just, it, it just kind of comes out of nowhere. It also comes right after Lucas's signature. So I get the impression that we're talking to someone different. You said your time is 1985. I thought you were also from 2109 like your friend who brought the box of lights. Who had he been talking to on the leams? had he too received the poem the first message which had been forgotten in recent months a similar one we watched or rather waited for a message from 2109 we weren't confident of a response as there had been no hint of another communicant until now apart from the poem said deb 
I know they think the poem is somebody different than Lucas. I stepped into the confusion with a message of my own to 2109 in case it was all part of a hoax. I used what I thought was a very tongue-in-cheek greeting. It was a bit Star Trek calling 2109. I wrote to Lucas at the same time telling him about the poem and offering to type in what it said if he wanted. I wanted to see the poem he had received and in my thoughts these preposterous communications were flung out into a vortex and one spun upward and the other more sure and its travel spiraled into the past. An hour later each was answered according to its nature on the screen from an unsigned source to Lucas. Friend. You must reckon for thy verse, for thys shalt be your help. I can say Nemo. <laughs> From this same source, we too received a few words, words that were far more unsettling than anything received so far, because however we looked at it, we decided we were being used. You must reckon for thy verse, thys shalt be your help. This is the next communication and it's addressed to Ken, Deb, and Peter. We are sorry that we can give you only two choices. One, that you either have your predicament explained in such a non-rhyme way that you may have instant understanding but cause what should not be to happen. Or number two, try to understand that you three have a purpose that shall in your lifetime changes the face of history. We 2109 must not affect your thoughts directly, but give you some sort of guidance that will allow room for your own destiny. All we can say is that we are all part of the same God, whatever he, it is. So they automatically assume it's a hoax. Ken's all hacked off. They're just confused, really. So Lucas ends up coming back a little bit later. And he says, my goodly friend, here is my verse, but I think you will make no sense of this thing. I wrote it for a record. Take what is truly yours to be your confusion before it affects a man who may be in trouble or danger. Many a year ago since your day, this knack device is not incitement to evil, but the opposite of that, an angel of good fortune for those who shine, whatever be your motive questions about important matters from three that shine who nonetheless you have seen will cause the box of lights to be no more such conduct shall be your correction for an easy death is near for a friend of a wise man who chooses the foul man must see the king to tell him of the cat that frightened a mouse and cure your sickness each of you men that have understanding, I do not doubt that your prayers shall be answered so that you may teach wisdom unto the foolish. Be wary, my friend, of your lust. The pudding may burn. I will write tomorrow. I am none too well. Signed, Lucas, your loving friend. Sounded like someone pretending to be Lucas. I don't know when it started to sound like that, but it started to sound like someone pretending to be Lucas. And now I just can't hear Lucas. Maybe it's like a changed Lucas. I was thinking about this. Maybe like the experience of going to jail, you know, all that. I mean, I mean, this is a, just a collection of kind of fragments and they don't make any sense. And this is not usually how Lucas writes. And all of them are very confused. And they're at this point heavily invested into this endeavor. Okay, they don't know if, that it's a hoax yet, but... They're heavily invested at this point and they want to know if it is a hoax they want to know how it's being done so it's not like they're being stupid having like wishful thinking it's like they're really trying to catch everything this is strange that this happens all in the middle of the chaos of lucas supposedly being in jail and appealing to ken and deb to supposedly get him out but apparently they do think of a solution peter looks into the history and he names a man, it's very confusing because it's in between poetry, but basically he's giving Lucas some ammunition against a particular individual who I believe was treasonous. And so there's a couple of names in here that I would like to go back to. He ends the communication with 2109 saith, 
that the verse hold your salvation. And Lucas writes, I did not know this thing about man, nor do I know anyone that does. Because of this, deny his loyalty to the king. If it is true, according to the law, he will be a traitor, but he cannot be arrested. It would cause the authorities embarrassment. So he would be told to go away for a while till it is enough time for none to have memory of such an unfavorable act. For by this reason, Felhurst would rejoice to know and be sure to stop my punishment. This would seem a fitting answer. It may also be my rescue. I shall make haste to tell him. Lucas writes, My true friend, Ken, no, I haven't spoken with the sheriff. Tomorrow I go before the court. I can't escape being condemned. They won't listen to my story of Bishop Mann. Only the sheriff could help, but he is powerless when I am in court. I am so weak that I don't find it easy to think clearly. I can hear Catherine crying for me. It pains me so. She is only 14, too young to be by herself without a man to guide her. I hope that she isn't taken as a witch like me, but this would be typical of this prejudiced government. I have thought for days and nights without sleep on what there was in these verses of ours that could save me, but I cannot remember all of your verse as I am not allowed any writing materials. I beg you to think with me, for time is running out. If you can't speak with me again, then I must also beg you to write my book and place this in it. To all people concerning good friends, Ken, Peter, and Debbie, although I am long dead in your time, I would like you to believe that my friends are not furies nor devils, but great men and a good woman who write this book, not for themselves, but for your better understanding. Although many foolish people will turn away from this unknown thing, those that can learn will find great knowledge if you do not turn away from what is true. The people of my time cannot learn, for we are thrown in prison for thinking and reasoning on what is not explained. So we learn only what the crown will teach and not what there is to be learned. I am a man of God's book, but I will die for this very reason. I pray you understand me, for life is too short to go to God with nothing learnt. Farewell, my good, honest friends. May your God receive you, and long live Oxford. Lucas. And it just gets very far-fetched, and it's like, I have to just kind of learn how to suspend my disbelief when it comes to certain things. That's enough for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you are watching this series. I'll catch you for part six.